All right. So this is a student example from your book. I did assign it before we had any essay assignments yet um, because I wanted you to see how this person uses, again, a literary element, weaves it into the story, analyzing, analyzes it. This is in your book. Like I said, you were already supposed to read it, so I don't want to spend forever on this, particularly since the last video was like 24 minutes. Um, so we're not going to spend a huge amount of time. Um, but I want to point out, since the last essay didn't have text evidence, how this one uses it um, effectively. But I also want to point out some things that are not appropriate in this essay. I don't I don't totally agree that it should be in the book. Um, so let's just dive in. All right, how setting reflects emotions and Anton, Ch Anton Chekhov's The Lady with the Dog. This is a strong title because it tells us exactly where we're going. Your title's kind of like a little bit of a roadmap, right? We know that we're gonna see, we know that the thesis statement is gonna be built around this idea that the setting kind of reflects the emotional import of the things that happen in the plot of this story, right? Um, all right, setting is important to check off the lady with the dog. But wait, isn't setting important to all stories? Not necessarily. In many stories, like Hemingway's Hills Like White Elephants, the plot could be happening anywhere and it would not matter. Okay, don't do this. Don't do any of this. <laughs> like, yeah, obviously setting's important. That's why the person's writing it. That's a terrible opening. The bow wait? Don't do that. Those rhetorical questions, please avoid that. Um, also, this is patently false. Uh, setting is really, really essential to Hills Like White Elephants. It's one of the most important parts of the whole thing. Um, so I would suggest to this writer that they should cut all of this. Let me change this to a suggestion. None of this is appropriate to open. Um, We could just open here, though. In The Lady with the Dog, I would add, by Anton Chekhov. Am I spelling his name correctly? Nope. Chekhov. The setting plays an important role in the story in particular to Dimitri, who is the main character and who experiences the most grief throughout. This is a fine opening. It's not quite our thesis statement, but it's, an, it's kind of letting us know where our thesis statement is going to go. He goes from being a man of at 40 who is full of youthful energy and thinks he has been loved by many women to an old man who realizes that he is just experiencing love for the first time. During the course of the narrative, the setting Chekhov maps out shows the progression of Dmitri's affair with Anna Sergeyevna, Dmitri's state of mind, and the changes that Dmitri undergoes. The setting in the story is just as important as any character. In fact, I would argue that the setting is the single most important component in the story. This is the kind of thing I want you to avoid. I would argue... Yeah, obviously, this person is writing it. Of course they're arguing this. We know that they're arguing this, right? Um, I would, I understand why they're saying this, because they're making this, they're, they're at, they're kind of like doubling down on their thesis statement. The setting in the story is just as important as any character, and it reflects the emotional changes throughout um, the story. Um, and then they are just like, actually, it's the most important component of the story. I think that it would be stronger if this person just said, if they wanted to like say, they're, they're not willing to just say a setting is the most important part of the story. They're not willing to come out and say that, which is why they added this, I would argue, right? The problem with I think, I feel, I believe is that it kind of mitigates, it weakens, it waters down your assertions. That's what this person's doing because they're unwilling to say that they're to correct that the setting is the most important component of the story. So, um... If you were writing this, for instance, and you felt uncomfortable making that strong assertion, you could you could just simply say, in some ways, setting is the single most import, important component of the story. In some ways, the setting. I also, I love 
this title, but this title is not reflected in our thesis statement here, right? So how could we change that? The setting of the story is just as important in, as any character. Um, I think maybe we could add it here. During the course of the narrative, the setting Chekhov maps out shows the progression of Dmitri's affair um, with Anna Sergeyevna, Dmitri's state of mind, and the change changes that Dmitri undergoes. Um, reflects strong emotions throughout the story by showing the progression of Dmitri's affair with Anna Sergeyevna, Dmitri's state of mind, and the changes that Dmitri undergoes. All right, so what do we have here? We have your traditional thought paragraph essay set up where they're saying, hey, this thing, this literary element, which is the setting, impacts the plot in this way, which is through charting emotions, and here's the three ways I'm going to show that. They're going to show it through the affair, they're going to show it with the state of mind, and they're going to show it through the character's changes, right? Which is interesting because actually we've got characterization coming into this a little bit too, and you'll see as if you read the whole thing that he uses a bit of symbolism because he starts to play with colors, right? So just because you're talking about setting doesn't mean you're also not going to be talking about other elements. You don't necessarily want to name those elements or really take them on. Like you don't want to be like, I promise to show you how every single literary element shapes the plot of the story because that's just an entire course on a story. You don't, that's not, that can't be an essay, right? It's too many things. Um, but be aware that all of these things are happening at once in a story. So you may be touching on some other literary elements uh, as you um, move through the, the essay. Okay, so I think we improved this um, introduction quite a bit. Um, I would love us to move beyond what this student is doing. Um, the fact that they're using these three arguments is fine. It's a good way to keep yourself organized. But I'd like you to go back to that other student essay I showed you, or one of your peers, um, because there wasn't, yes, I do think they could make their thesis statement a little bit clearer, but they didn't need to pin it on three defined reasons. Um, your theses can be clear, they can be strong, they can be provocative and original without them being so mechanical, so mechanically this, this, and this, right? This is kind of a, a bit more of a juvenile way to set up an essay. Um, Dimitri's relationship with the lady with the dog has its ups and downs, which are reflected in the seasons and the descriptions of weather. So what, this is a topic sentence, right? What does this topic sentence support? This, the progression of Dimitri's affair with Anna Sarjenevna. Um, and so that, yeah, that clearly lines up. So we're, we know we're now going into the first supporting point, the first topic sentence, the first reason that uh, the person's going to really be arguing, or the first example of why the person's going to prove to us that setting reflects the emotions through these three things, right? Um, okay, so I would say if this were you sending this to me, ups and downs is not appropriate. Too casual. The language is too casual. And it's not really saying anything. What are you saying? This is what I mean when I'm talking about uh, specificity of language. Dimitri's relationship with the lady uh, with the dog is tumultuous. Dimitri's relationship with the la lady with the dog um, is uh, dynamic and changes. Um, Dimitri's relationship with the lady with the dog has both positive and negative elements. Any of those would be ways to reflect the same idea of ups and downs, but actually say what you're saying. Ups and downs doesn't mean anything. It's, it's first of all, like I said, it's casual language. It's kind of euphemistic and it's not saying specifically what the person means. However, this point is excellent, which are reflected in the seasons and the descriptions of the weather. This idea that the tumultuousness of this relationship, the ups and downs of it, as they said, are reflected in the changing of the weather, excellent idea. And the weather is setting, right? So maybe I would say that this writer should, in, should do a bit of a better job of explaining what setting is and how they're going to look at setting because setting can mean so many different things as we've talked about. Setting can be mental, setting can be physical, setting can be temporal, right? Setting can be lots of different things. So they should, he should, they should have 
um, made that a bit clearer already. He makes this apparent when he says, the weather is better by evening. This is not context. He makes this apparent. What is he saying this about, right? I think it would be stronger for the essay if we had a sense of that before he drops in this piece of evidence. However, the weather is better by evening. Does that reflect a change in the weather, which then, of course, we know is supposed to reflect a change in the relationship? Yes, it does. If it's better, it has to have been worse. So we know there's a change. Their lives are better when they are together in the summer. Okay, sure. But again, this is dropped in. If we hadn't read the story, we wouldn't know what they were talking about. Your essay should never, ever, ever be like that. You need to be clear about what you're talking about, even if the person has read the story. This is the time Dimitri and Anna meet and start their courtship. So we're kind of getting this backwards. We're getting our reason, we're getting our evidence, and then we're going back to context. It would be stronger and less confusing if he started with this context, and maybe even if he put a bit more of the background in the, in the introduction. It would just save time and be more efficient. Both are married, and both have spent so much time forcing themselves to love their partners, and they do not recognize real love when they feel it. Dimitri initially only wants a fling, and doesn't even learn to use Anna's name, referring to her only as the lady with the dog. There isn't any stress yet, and the two can just be happy with things the way they are. They go on dates and spend time together in Anna's hotel room. Dimitri starts to think of her as Anna Sergeyevna, Genevia, the lady with the dog, paragraph 29, showing a shift within the relationship. He shows he started to think of this more as a relationship by using her full name, but doesn't completely switch as he adds this epitaph, tap, epitaph, the lady with the dog. He is trying to resist because he is still married. Dimitri feels young and alive and thinks back to all the women that he has made happy in his life. A bit of this is summary. It's a little too rooted in summary. However, there are strong pieces of evidence. So I want you to see evidence doesn't have to be like long to make sense. It doesn't have to be a block of evidence to really support your ideas. Um, but what is wrong with this paragraph? At the end, we land in a totally different place from the opening. We are supposed to be talking about how weather and the changes of the weather reflects the um, the sort of instability of their relationship, what we have is that the relationship changes when he starts to call her by her name, but we never have weather again. So the person is already being a bit unsteady in the unification of their body paragraphs. Another aspect of setting are the places described in the story. We shouldn't have another aspect here because they never said that weather was part of the setting. Um, we know that it is, but they should have made that clear which relate to things the characters feel or know at a subconscious level. That's a really interesting point. Um, but how are they going to prove it? Let's see. At the start of the story, Dimitris is saying, Dimitri is staying at the seaside re resort in Yalta. We know the resort is an impersonal place where someone can reinvent themselves or get away from things. Oh, we know that a resort is an impersonal place where someone can reinvent themselves or get away from things they don't like about home. Dimitri reinvents his idea about what love is while getting away from his wife he does not care for. Dimitri is meets Anna for the first time in the public gardens. Paragraph two, a garden is a place of growth, reflective of soon to be growth of their relationship. Okay, so now we're getting the actual literal physical settings and how it corresponds with the story and how um, it relates to how the characters feel on a subconscious level. I mean, that's pretty cool. Does this relate to our thesis statement? Dimitri's state of mind. Uh, I feel that the writer should be clear about what state of mind means because state of mind I can see how this means subconscious ideas and thoughts and positions it can also mean emotions it can also mean mental stability or instability so this is a bit too vague and again specificity of language is important I'm kind of a little bit finding that going through this essay may uh, uh, together I mean, I'm just going to be saying the same things. The structure follows a traditional essay structure, and it's strong in that way. But the thinking and the ideas and the logic is not totally unified. Some of the language is too too casual. Um, some of the evidence is not quite thorough enough. And um, it doesn't entirely prove the thesis. Um, it's also a bit longer than I think it needs to be. Um, actually quite a bit longer than I need. I think it needs to be. So, you know, if anybody wants to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about this essay, we can. I don't really 
feel like I want to go through it, especially because it was already assigned to you. You were already supposed to read it for an example that the book provides of how to effectively write a literary analysis essay. The main thing that you can pick up from this and grow from in this essay is the structure and the use of text evidence. Um, it is generally unified enough, um, although it could use work. Um, so I, I don't think I want to waste my time or your time by continuing on with this right now. Um, but I do think you should read it for an example. I mean, honestly, what would be a really excellent use of your time would be to read through this and actually grade it yourself according to the rubric in your syllabus. Um, that I think is the most effective way to learn how to write an essay is to actually teach it or grade it. Um, my writing has improved a lot since teaching writing. Because uh, I see the holes in my own logic when I see the holes in the writers I'm teaching's logic, right? The writers wh whom I'm teaching writing to's logic. I'm not really sure where the parenthesis, I mean, where the possessive S should have gone there. Anyway, um, so if anybody wants to do that, email me directly and I will send you this Google Doc of this so that you can actually um, edit it and you can send it back to me and I can look at it and we can talk about that. I think that'd be a cool individual assignment. Um, but again, I'm not, I don't want to keep going through this because I don't think it's that strong. It has strong elements. It is, according to your book, acceptable for a college student. Um, I have seen more advanced essays at the high school level. So I don't think it's, I don't think it is what I would use as an example, but it does, it does do a good job of coming up with provocative supporting points, supporting those points through text evidence and analyzing it well. Um, so do read it for those things uh, and let me know if you would like to do more work on this.